Hey you guys, Comet here. Welcome to the Long Overdue, episode 13 in my Overly Scienced series. Well, I guess I really should call it episode 13 and a half. Long story short, I had to do a factory reset on my computer, and so I lost my original video, video editing software, and along with it went episode 13. Fortunately, I didn't lose the map, so we can still use this going forward. Nothing much happened in episode 13, actually. All I did was extend these Robominers out and finish off... Well, I got this battery box working. It's not completely finished yet. That way I could use these power transformers to power all of the components up here on top. So these leftmost power transformers here are going to power everything over here. And then these rightmost power transformers here are going to be powering everything over here. And then one other thing I did was put in these transit tube access points within the base to try and speed up my duplicants a little bit more. So the plan for this episode is to put in another duplicate housing unit over here and then cap off these cool steam vents and start harvesting the water. Because with more duplicants, we're going to need more oxygen which then requires more water. So I'm going to put in the floor here, so it's one, two, three ladders, and then the floor goes, and it looks like I'm out of ceramic already. Yep, okay. That means I need to go make some ceramic somewhere. Now if I remember correctly, this feature here is a polluted oxygen vent, or an infectious polluted oxygen vent, one of those. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, analyze it, and then run some numbers. Marie is just about to finish this now. There we go. Let's run some numbers on this. Let me get a calculator. Here we go. Now, there's a mod you can get that does all this math for you, but if you want to know how, I, I can show you right here. So, it makes 300 grams a second. So, 300... It erupts 375 seconds every 618. So 300 times the 375, then divided by 618. And the active period requires analysis. We already analyzed it. Uh, I think I need to reset. Okay, it's been reset now. I can see the activity period. So let's do this again. 300 times 375 divided by 618 times 52.4 divided by 82.3 then the next activity is irrelevant so we just hit equals and we end up with 115.9 grams per second when you reduce all the units out. So we can call that 116. And then I think there's another one up here. Right here. Let's do the math on this one. This looks like it's going to give us 132. So we can then add the 116 onto that. So between the two, we can make about 250 grams per second of polluted oxygen. And a deodorizer can remove 100 grams per second of polluted oxygen and turn it into clean oxygen. So we would only need about two and a half deodorizers if we combine these two geysers on average. Which is not very much actually when I think about it. I think I would have more luck by just trying to evaporate polluted water and all of the infrastructure required to move the polluted oxygen and combine them together, it might not be worth it. I think I might just deconstruct these, actually. Yeah, so using the mod Deconstructible Features, I'm going to go ahead, once you analyze a feature, you can schedule a deconstruct. So I'm going to deconstruct both of these, and then make a polluted water evaporating thing like I had over here in the beginning. So that means all of these thimble reeds here won't be fertilized by the incoming polluted water from the bathrooms. 
But if I look over here at industrial ingredients, you can see we have over 2,000 reed fiber, so that's that's quite a bit. I don't think I'm going to need that much very soon. And if I do end up needing some more reed fiber, I can redirect some of that polluted water somewhere else. Okay, I think the best place for the evaporator is going to be over in this area. So if I do something kind of like this, with some ladders on the side, I can put in some reservoirs. Five should do, so let me get rid of that. Ladder here. We can bring that up to there. So in here, I'm just going to put a bunch of deodorizers. And if this is working properly, believe it or not, we are going to need every single one of these deodorizers, and maybe more. When I built this on one of my previous bases, it was able to pressurize the entire map to, like, 10 kilos of oxygen. And I actually... I just opened up a hole in the top of the map, and my base stayed pressurized because I had so much oxygen coming out of this thing. Now, it does take a lot of polluted water, but you get a lot of oxygen out of it. I think one of the very first videos in this series, I go over the oxygen efficiency with different, different methods, and evaporating polluted water into polluted oxygen is the most water efficient. So I'm going to take this incoming polluted water, we're going to send it up this way, jump over there, and then go into right here. So I gotta put down a bridge right there. We will snip that, and that, and then deconstruct all of this piping here. So the theory behind this, the polluted water will come in, fill up all of these reservoirs, then when the reservoirs are full, I will deconstruct them. And when a reservoir is deconstructed, all of its contents are put into a bottle, like this. So we're going to have a bunch of bottles of polluted water on the ground here. And then on the top here, we're going to have a bottle emptier. We're going to put a microscopic amount of some liquid down at the bottom. And since those bottles are in that layer of liquid, they will off-gas, and as long as they stay in that liquid, and that liquid stays below, I think, 1.8 kilos, then those bottles will just continue to off-gas. So let's set this to... Oh, crude oil. I think I have a lot of crude oil. I have to be very careful on how much my dupes drop off, though. So if we look here, this layer of crude oil, the 5.2 kilos, that's too much. So I'm going to mop that up until it's less than 1.8. So I have too much in the center here. But over here on this side, it's fine. So we'll go ahead and queue up one mop there. All right, now it looks like everything is at the right level. Next step will be to increase the inflow of polluted water. Because right now, it's only being supplied by the bathrooms. And I think the easiest way to do that will be to stop filtering the output from this pump. So if we take a look at the piping here, the output from these petroleum generators is being filtered through these water sieves and then put back into the line as clean water. But I still have this option connected up here, where I can just send the polluted water back up through this pipe, and it connects in right here with the bathroom's output. And actually, I don't want these here anymore either, because I can use the polluted water from the output from these carbon skimmers to send up through this pipe as well. Now that will take more water from this pipe here, but since I'm trying to empty out all of this water, that's okay. So I'm going to deconstruct all of these water sieves. The polluted water here is going to have to 
let's see, I gotta figure out the bridges here, because we need clean water coming in, so we can jump over here, and then, let's see, I'm gonna need to put another jump here, deconstruct that, and then we can have clean water come this way, like that, to feed those. Then the output here, that runs across that way, so we can deconstruct all of this. So now, this reservoir is almost full, and we just need to do that four more times, and then we should have an explosion of polluted oxygen. So while we wait for the polluted water to accumulate, what I can do is start building the infrastructure around these cool steam vents here. So the way I usually do this, I have an aluminum wall here, temperature shift plates, and then a liquid pump. Then I need to make room for the steam turbine, which actually sits up one higher, so we don't need ceramic here, but rather here. In which case, I can actually make the whole thing smaller by moving this whole thing over one. So the aluminum will go here. Steam turbine will go here. And then the aqua tuner can go down in this room. To make everything look nice, I will put in some drywall. We actually need to make room for a hydro sensor, so I'm going to move this pump up one, which is something I've never done before, I just thought of it right now. If we put the pump here, we can fit in a hydro sensor right here, connect that up, and since the pump can reach down here, it should still work. Now the reason for this hydro sensor, we want to keep a little bit of water in here as a buffer. That way we don't have really big temperature fluctuations when it starts erupting. And we can set this to work when it is above 1000 kilograms. That means that the water level in here has gone up to the next level, and so the pump can start working. Now for power, I can fit a power transformer right here. This will come over, power the aqua tuner to get power over to this pump is something like this. And then I will need a joint plate here. And then I can connect that up like that. And then I will bridge over right here. And actually, I think I can just do that. Yeah. I'm going to make a vacuum in these two rooms by filling up all of these blocks with well, blocks. Now that this is in place, I can deconstruct all of this, being careful not to disrupt the liquid lock. And now I have two vacuums. Normally I make a gas pump and just pump out all the stuff, but I think this was faster. So I can put the steam turbine back in, I can throw my aqua tuner in here, put my temperature shift plates back in, drywall around the edges, and then start figuring out how I'm going to do all of the plumbing. So the aqua tuner is going to need a bypass, the steam turbine needs a place for exhaust, and then I will also need a place for a buffer. Let's see now, all of the places I want radiant pipe are going to be in this room, this room, and this room. I think what's going to happen is the exhaust from the steam turbine is going to come out one and then straight down. So I can put a bridge here, and then radiant pipe through here. Then it will come down, go through the liquid layer, go into this room to cool off the power transformer, and then it will just go straight into here via insulated piping. But I don't have any more ceramic, so I'm gonna put a hold on that for now. A liquid pipes coming out here within this room doesn't need to be insulated. Once it gets to here, I think I will insulate it. 
Now I want to fill this room up here with hydrogen. So I'm going to put in a vent, and then drag this piping all the way. I gotta get around the volcano there, and around the natural gas pipe there. I can just come in right here. So let me grab all of this hydrogen here. And this tile here actually needs to be aluminum as well. Let's see how we're doing over here. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct these. Because I really need some ceramic to finish off what I'm doing over here. And this isn't quite going as planned. All this did was force the crude oil into this tile here. I need it to stay in this tile. Let's add a tiny bit more crude oil here. I need these bottles to stay submerged in the crude oil, not in polluted oxygen. See how it filled up to 1.8 kilos? That's the maximum pressure for things to off-gas. So like if you have oxalite on the ground, if it's in 1.8 kilos of liquid or a gas, it won't off-gas. So by forcing the bottle to stay submerged in a liquid that has less than the 1.8 kilos, it will always off-gas. I'm gonna try mopping up the crude oil in between. See if I can't get it to push around. There we go. Now it's off-gassing. It did a little bit. Let me try something less viscous than oil. Let me try just straight up water. Alright, this looks like it's working properly now, so don't use oil, use water. All of these are full now, so I'm going to deconstruct them and see what happens. We've got a little bit of carbon dioxide and chlorine stuck in here. These deodorizers are going crazy now. And if we look at the oxygen pressure in here, it's at 5 kilos. So this will actually pressurize the entire map very quickly if I'm not careful. That means I could maybe use, instead of this, I could just throw in some gas pumps up here. Or even siphon it off from up here. Because if I look, my water pipe here, I'm over consuming one pipe in order to run these oil wells down here because I'm drawing so much water from the oxygen production. And a lot of it is also going into these carbon skimmers. Alright, here's the plan. We're going to have one, two, three pipes of oxygen. Now, I don't think it's possible for anything but oxygen to be over here. We may have some carbon dioxide float down over into here. But carbon dioxide, if it gets into here, will just float down to the bottom here and be picked up by these carbon skimmers. So carbon dioxide's okay. The only thing we don't want in here is chlorine. And it looks like all of the chlorine is at the bottom of my base. And I don't have anything up here making chlorine, so I think it's pretty safe to not put a filter on these. So for power here, I'm just gonna do that. Now, I don't want to completely remove these pipes. I want them to run only if these can't keep up with the demand. So the way I'm gonna go about doing that is through the use of bridges here. So these will come up, connect to these bridges here, And if these pumps can't fill that bubble in the pipe, then this bridge here will place onto it from this pipe here. So I can connect this up here. Let's cut some of that. And then I can run this like this down into there. So then this one will go into there. This one will go straight down to there, and this one will go into there. So this should now prioritize the oxygen already on the map before 
it creates more using the electrolyzers. So let's see what that does to our water supply here. It looks like it's starting to back up again, which is a good thing. The only thing I am still uncertain of is what to do with all of this chlorine. If I look at the star map, I don't have any salty dwarfs. Well, these might be some. Well, this one's not, because it's the temporal tear. This one might be. What I can do with a salty dwarf is bring back a dash of salt vine seed. And dash of salt vines will consume chlorine and give you sand and salt. And that's really the only way to get rid of chlorine other than just venting it off into space, obviously. I could liquefy it and use it to fertilize gas grass, but it's just not worth the hassle. So I think my only option is to vent it out into space. So what I'm going to do is put in a gas pump kind of in the middle of this cloud here. And we're just going to send this all the way up to the top of the map. We're going to vent it right there. And it looks like my sweepy dock is broken. We'll deconstruct that and rebuild it. Ah! Sweepy just died. Okay. I forgot that that happens. When you deconstruct the dock, Sweepy just explodes. Alright, the chlorine is on its way to space now. I don't want to get rid of any of this carbon dioxide, though. I could use that for polluted water. Let's see. I may need a filter here. Maybe putting these underneath the carbon dioxide geyser wasn't the best idea. I could put the gas pumps over here, and then not have a filter, actually. Let's do that. So right here. Go ahead and connect those up, and we can just connect in right there. So for power, I can do something like that, and then get rid of this. And I should keep these pumps from getting rid of this precious carbon dioxide. Because every gram of carbon dioxide can be turned into ceramic, which is what I use for all of my insulated tile, which you've probably already figured out. Now that this is completely sealed off, and I've got an atmosphere in there to protect the power transformer, I'm going to get rid of this liquid lock and connect everything up to power. That should activate this pump, which will provide more water to our pipe up here which looks like is still having a little bit of a hard time keeping up with the demand. I almost forgot this. Now I need to make a little super coolant basin here and fill up this loop. So we can set this to work when... Well, actually, we need to do some math. So let me grab a calculator here. This erupts with... 4988 grams of steam per second times 447 divided by 789 times 80.1 divided by 119.2. And we'll divide that by a thousand so we can get it in kilograms. So it makes almost 2 kilograms per second on average. So if we go to Oni Assistant here, and bring the calculator back up, we are going to convert 1.8989 kilograms per second. The starting temperature from a cool steam vent is 110, and we're using one steam turbine. So we need to see how low we can get the temperature to go before it requires more than one steam turbine. So at 5 degrees, it looks like we only need one steam turbine. And I can tell that because this number here, the 1,898.9 grams a second of water, is less than 2,000. A steam turbine can convert 2,000 grams per second of steam into water. So if we go to zero, say, 
The numbers change, but it's still less than 2,000. So it doesn't really matter what number we put here. Right, let's say we turn it into ice. Then it would take more than one. So knowing that, we can come back over here and set this to 25. And then it won't overproduce for the steam turbine as long as we have a big enough steam buffer down in here. So I'm going to seal this off and seal that off. Get some super coolant in here. Actually, I don't want to seal that off quite yet. Because first, ooh, and this should not be working yet either. We don't want to overheat this aqua tuner while it's in a vacuum. We need to fill up this room down here with some water. And we can just use the water that this cool steam vent outputs. Now that we have water in here, we can go ahead and turn this back on. So this should be a self-sustaining system that outputs cool water. And I think we're good on the super coolant too. So I'm gonna go ahead and deconstruct that. Now I'm going to copy this design here and put it here. This was able to produce enough clay for me to finish off this and this. I'm just waiting on this to fill up with enough steam. That way we have a heat battery down here. This one steam turbine can't keep up with one cool steam vent. This acts as a heat battery so that the steam turbine can keep up with the cool steam vent. It drags out its power over a longer period of time so you have a more even flow on the steam turbine. Same with this one over here. Like This has been off for quite a while and this is still trying to cool off this steam room because there's well, a thousand kilograms per tile of steam. If you didn't have this big steam room in here, you would need two steam turbines so that when the cool steam vent starts erupting, it would be completely consumed by the steam turbines. But then when the steam vent is dormant, you would have neither of the steam turbines working. This thing has just been churning out the clay over here and I've got quite a bit of ceramic stored up now too as well. 9.5 tons, 11 tons, 11 tons, and it looks like they've been taking from this pile, so there's not quite as much here. I've also gone ahead and capped this off, so now I can directly pump this into the water pipe over here. Because if we look at this, this isn't pumping clean water anymore. It's starting to do the other liquids down here. And so the water reservoir that I have here is starting to drain and the salt water one is filling up. So these two cool steam vents and this water geyser will be what provides the, all of the water for the base now. It looks like we've got a thousand kilograms per tile now. This liquid vent is overpressurized. If this happens to you, don't punch a hole in the wall and try to let some steam out. Just let the steam turbine work and it will remove some of the steam from this room and it will back up in the pipe here. And that might give you enough of a buffer. Like this one over here. Sometimes it's overpressurized, but as soon as the steam turbine turns back on and starts consuming some of the steam, the water will flow. This is still overpressurized, even though there's liquid in the pipe and the steam turbine, it's saying pipe is blocked. So what you can do in this scenario is just empty the pipe. You don't need to break in to lose it, uh, to get rid of any steam. Just let the steam turbine take the steam out of the room for you and empty the pipe. And you want to do this until that error goes away right there. So it went away, so I cancelled it, and now we should stay in a perfect loop now. Just like this one. You'll see every once in a while this one will show the error for a brief moment, but once the steam turbine takes more steam out of the room, it just keeps going. So this is now complete, and this is now complete. They are completely self-contained units. All they need to do is be provided with power, and they will continue to give me water. It is power negative, because the ratio is one aqua tuner to one steam turbine. If you want to make something power neutral, 
then you'd have two aqua tuners to three steam turbines if you're running super coolant. Seeing as how I have so much extra power, it makes sense to just trade power for clean water at this point in the game. That's about all the time I can allocate to this episode. In the next one, I will definitely put in, now that we have all of this ceramic, I will definitely put in the second duplicate housing unit and start working on bringing in more dupes. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.